when Carlos and I were uh, basically um, discussing this agenda, we thought there were a, a couple of areas that um, that we could be most effective in this discussion. One, one is, uh, of course, we've already had some discussion about what it's going to look like uh, this fall uh, as as each of the campuses either reopen or don't. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about that. And then secondly, we'll we'll morph into but ideas for enhancing um, our precast industry engagement. Um, there's some things we've done very well with you all with the with the our academic partners, and there's some things that maybe we've we've fallen short on. And so we we want to have an interactive discussion about what we can be doing more, um, maybe how how we can be more effective in our communications with each other and 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 those types of things. So um, we'll start with the with the campus opening in fall of 2020. And um, I'm a member of SCUP, the Society of College and University Planners, and through that I'm getting an um, online version of the Chronicle of Higher Education. They have re they they are since COVID started, um, they've been surveying uh, most of the universities in the country, and and as of two days ago, um, they've surveyed 910 colleges and universities. Um, they know pretty much what every university is thinking, at least what they've communicated, whether they're going to be back on campus or not. And from this, from two days ago, this is what each of your universities are reporting. So we're seeing that most of them are planning to be back on campus, um, but some, some with uh, maybe hybrid versions of it, as we've been hearing a little bit um, from a couple of you. So I wanted to open up this discussion, and I've asked Carlos if he'd sort of help me lead a little bit of this. So we need to understand what you're planning, um, how we can be most effective with you, and and really the effectiveness of, of these precast studios or curriculum courses um, is the hands-on portions from, from our perspective. So so how, how are we going to manage all that? OK, um, I'll, I'll take the lead on this a little bit, uh, Peter, as we have talked. Uh, so uh, first, a uh, sound check. Everybody can hear me? Yes. Good. OK, uh, let me start with a little uh, housekeeping thing. Um, as we were uh, discussing on the other presentations, I went ahead and created a share folder um, and uh, just sent everybody an email with some of the um, uh, I guess material that is on the share folder. This is for today's seminar. Um, I also send a, a direct link to Marty and Peter, just in case you don't get it, you can probably forward this to everybody else. But uh, this is for all of us to upload our presentations today. I already put mine as a PDF. Uh, with all those pictures, it was like a 400 megabyte. So <laughs> I had to just reduce it. So. So it's manageable, uh, but everybody has a um, privileges to write and read and edit. Um, I also created another folder called resources, and this is for Peter and Marty to upload any material you might want to share with us uh, in each of our programs. Also for our uh, producers and for our um, associate producers to also upload any material you want. I actually, on that resources folder, I put the images or some of the images from our visit to the Perro Museum so everybody can um, grab those and use them on your uh, studios and presentations as well. So that um, I just sent an email uh, on that to everybody, so you should get it as uh, so a link to open the folder. And let me know if you have any issues um, accessing that folder. It's actually a Google Drive. Uh, it does work better when you have a Google account, but if, if it does, if you don't, then I think it's fine um, in any case. It's it's showing up already. It's great. Okay, good. Um, so it, it, Carlos, I, I, the permission, oh, uh, sorry, the permission um, doesn't allow me to upload anything right now. Okay. Um, I'll take a closer look at that. Uh, but but send send me an email if if you have any issues um, with that. Um, we'll 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 troubleshoot them as we go. Uh, but I thought we we should use this as as a way to sort of collect our information, put our collective thoughts, and um, and and share any um, student work or any kind of work that that is of interest for 
for um, all of us um, as we advance on this. Um, what I thought about doing in this particular session was also open it up to our uh, producers and um, associate producers who are joining us and also uh, for Marty to share uh, with us your thoughts uh, as you move forward. I can tell you from Clemson, um, we don't have any official announcements as the last uh, town hall meeting that we, we had was that the uh, the provost indicated that any official announcement will be made on or after, shortly after July 1st, as to what we're doing. Uh, as Peter said, yes, uh, Clemson is considering a range of scenarios, including hybrid models and, you know, face-to-face. -face. Certainly, the university does not know yet what to do with football, uh, which is going to be a big determinant on how things are going to fall in campus. And I, we have, but what we have been instructed from the department is that we're looking to um, um, uh, in-person and face-to-face -face, uh, studios. Um, but once again, they, they had also asked us to be prepared for going online or going to a hybrid model, at least with studios. With the rest of the courses, they're looking at um, larger classrooms with smaller classes, um, capping the section numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in reality, for our program, uh, will not have a major impact um, at Clemson as we we uh, we manage our own classes um, personally, both Brandon and I, and we have pretty much full full um, saying on how the classes will be run. Um, the biggest concern I personally have is um, our studio does rely a lot on travel uh, with our projects, uh, and particularly our travels to Washington, D.C. We do at least two trips. Uh, for local trips to the plants, I think it's not going to be a major issue, but we do foresee a major um, uh, impact in travel. Uh, Clemson currently has a travel ban uh, for any kind of official travel. Uh, including by land. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see how this one plays out. I am considering an alternative project for um, the fall as opposed to our uh, traditional work with KCCT and OVO. Also depends on a lot on what they're doing um, and how things unfall uh, in Washington, D.C. as well. So um, those are a lot of moving parts, but uh, Brendan and I are already gearing up to sort of shift gears and then go to an alternative project uh, as we traditionally have come. We're certainly going to be doing the Padawando project and the tessellations. Um, so that's still going to stay, but we're still considering a couple of alternatives for um, a larger, larger scale project. So um, having said that, I thought I would sort of use that to set the tone and set the table to hear from, you know, uh, views from our associate producers and producers as to um, their thoughts on how to um, engage your help and your support that, as you know, is very instrumental for the success of our studios. Um, and here, uh, what kind of plans do you have put in place in your um, respective offices and plants um, as to how uh, would you help us actually continue this engagement in terms of our visits and in terms of our interaction with um, your respective engineers. Um, I would also put out from the foundation's point of view, I have had a couple of our programs come to me and ask, you know, since they haven't, they've had restrictions on travel, restrictions on speakers coming in and all of the hands-on learning that is so important to all of the studios that, that we work with, if they could kind of put a hold on their grant and then pick it up in a semester or two again. And uh, we did have a discussion about that with the Board of Trustees and the Board of Trustees is on board with anyone who wants to do that. If you want to say, you know, let's pick a different topic that's easier to teach, not hands-on, and then during the second semester instead of the first semester, go back to precast or skip a year and then come back to precast so we can do that hands-on. 
um, that is a possibility for anybody who um, who wants to do it that way. So it looks like most of our programs are planning to be on campus. Clemson mentioned that that potentially a, um, a ban on travel. Um, NC State, um, do you see challenges in in your studios? Your studio is not till spring, right? Correct. Um... The issue at NC State, although you are correct that they are planning for in-person, there is a number of spatial issues uh, that come into play. And so um, the university is looking to, so for example, in our studios, uh, we generally, all of our studios meet uh, three times a week from one until five. And so there are big rooms um, with many students in it. The university is putting up in place a restriction that all rooms can only be occupied at 25% occupancy at any one time. So at the end of the day, what that means is that a studio, since the studio times meet all at the same time, um, and our studios have cold desk scenarios in which each student has their own desk, if a studio can only be done at 25% occupancy, really in essence what that means is that a studio is only gonna be able to meet every fourth day, every fourth class period day. On top of it, we actually have multiple sections within one studio space. And so 25% occupancy, we actually may have six studios in a studio space. 25% occupancy is the maximum amount of occupancy. But due to the number of sections that we ha have, we can't have a section and a half meeting. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so most likely what will end up happening in a situation like that is that a studio, if we have six studios meeting in one space, then only a sixth of the studios can meet at any one time, which means now that we are down from 25% meeting to probably a, um, a one sixth percent meeting. Um, so we've started doing the math and it looks like even though we're planning for an in-person, that means that we would only have eight in-person classes for any one studio. So I, I bring this up as a, as a sort of red, not a red flag per se, but to say that although it says meeting for in-person, it's actually, uh, that's the goal, but that doesn't mean that it's actually going to be able to happen in any substantial way. So hopefully things change for NC State prior to the spring, but at the same time, maybe this challenge is an opportunity. Maybe this provides right. an, maybe this provides an opportunity for for much more um, interaction with with the precast um, community, doing things at the plant. Travis, are you still with us? I know you're muted. There you go. So, so, uh, so Travis, how, how about the students meeting up, meeting up at the plant? Sounds to me like we need to go and do some more studios down the state. Let's get the budget going. <laughs> Maybe we can call these internships. There we go. Actually, well, actually, obviously, uh, obviously, NC State students are always welcome up here. So, whatever we can do to help. Yeah, but but these these challenges m might prevent opportunities for for um, some changes of the way. Now now with the architecture programs, obviously you have have um, a set of requirements of what they have to be accomplishing. But maybe maybe we accomplish some of those in different ways. Um, KSU, you're trying to trying to start this this fall um, with a very energetic program. Um, it's it's not quite all in the studio, but um, uh, st starting in different ways. And I, Tony Tony's on with us, so there's an opportunity to start this discussion. I think of how how, how are we thinking of working through this? I think there are ways we can work around it. Uh, I think uh, Kennesaw State is in on traffic, 40 minutes an hour away from the plant. Uh, I think we definitely could make arrangements. Uh, 
How many students did you say you were going to have this fall? Well, we're going to have about 100, um, but they're in three separate classes. So whether we divide it into 34, 34, 34 um, for a plant tour or find a way that, you know, I don't know, they commute because they, they're roommates already and they're allowed in the same car, um, however that works, and go through a plant tour. Um, I think one of the issues is this um, 15 inch by 15 inch tile that the two pours, the U.S. form liner and then a pre, you know, concrete poured in place. Um, where to do those? So do we um, hotel that? Meaning, um, do we do it someplace on the Marietta Kennesaw campus? Do we um, do it at Metromont where everybody just spreads out? Providing the weather, weather's fine, and we do two pours at the same time. Um, I think those are kind of strategies that we'll have to discuss. Okay, I think we uh, definitely, if we did it on a Saturday or something like, we definitely be able to make arrangements at the plant to have uh, probably over uh, two or three Saturdays have uh, groups of 30, 35 come to the plant, and we have enough acreage here we can spread out different sections where uh, students can work but still keep us whatever required social distance there are requirements and uh, work something out sure if you do it on a saturday you could actually set it up on a long line bed couldn't you yes i have a few long line beds we're working on yeah yeah because i think the point that was to also make enough material so that we're not wasting material too so um I don't know if just doing all of them at the same time kind of makes sense or breaking it up, but I think that's something we can certainly strategize. And then we have a, um, three people that work in our shop, um, and as well as Geo and Jeff that can show up and help, you know, orchestrate it if the students are like really spread out so that there's multiple people there to make sure that the progress moves forward. Okay, and we also, uh bring some people in on Saturday, whether uh, I'm sure people would volunteer to come in and help out the students. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think we were sort of strategizing maybe like October and calling it kind of like a lab a week. I mean, so the students just don't do any other work except making for like two weeks straight. So they get the molds made, they get all the stuff, and then when they're ready to show up whatever day we, you know, figure out, um, uh, that have been put in the schedule, you know, so long as weather works in our favor, we may have to have, you know, a rain day. Um, but we were thinking maybe sort of October-ish. It should work. Uh, if it's on a Saturday, we'll be under, we could be under roof, so weather should be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, which is great. Moses is pouring the mold here. It makes more sense to to do all this at Metromont, you know, like Tony's going to do a few weekends. Um, I have no problem in, in bringing all the stuff to Metromont to pour the molds. In fact, I live closer to Metromont than I do to Athens, so. <laughs> okay, so I see the seeds being planted already. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, ultimately, like Tony said, whatever makes it easier uh, for you guys. I'm just thinking in terms of consistency, if over several weekends they they were planning on going to uh, Metromont at least it's, it's a consistent approach but I'm also available obviously to come to the campus as well so and we have a once we the mixture we can always uh bring it but that would be uh still a lot on the portal of mix mixers is that each student having a um sample to pour so it'd be 100 samples or we're looking at like 30 samples or? I think that's what we're going to dis discuss. In the past, when they actually had to buy the material themselves and make it themselves, um, we had them work in groups of two or three. So you take 100 and divide it either. So there'd either be 50 or there'd be such and such. And the, the shop guy yesterday, when I saw him, he was super ambitious and saying, oh, we should just make 100 of them. And then, you know, because they're also trying to keep the shop people in, in our um, department. Um, employed and so they're like oh we'll just and they put in a culture budget to have the school pay for all the other materials so we'll see how they come back but in the past it would have been you know uh half the amount so it would have been ideally like 50. um the shop is being really ambitious that we interface with and saying they'd like to do 100 so 
we'll see. And, and of course, we'll get input from you. And then we'll, before the semester starts, we'll, you know, negotiate a, a, a number because it's, um, it'll be fine either way. So yeah. in the fall, it's fall, in the fall, it's the form making as part of part yes. of your part, part of your um, environmental tech class. Um, Correct. The studio, the studio, and 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 the actual larger scale type things don't happen for three till three semesters down the road or so, right? Correct. Um, but well, the spring. structures structures Ideally as well spring. as that in the fall. Structures no, in the spring. That's in the spring. In the spring. So. Yeah. So, so they're spread out as to as to as to each of these different exercises, then. Oh which, yeah. Which which helps. Okay. Yeah, and it may even be that when Geo and I teach in the spring, depending on because it feels like things now with this COVID nineteen, if they just take a little bit longer, a little bit more planning. It may be that we do a corner full size mock up in the summer. Um, and plan for it and detail it and design it and, you know, start doing some of the building of the form work or that type of thing um, in the spring and do the true pour and the, you know, in the summer. We may stretch it out a bit, I think. I mean, we'll see. Okay. So, so, Marty, if I'm hearing correctly, I I don't know that any of our programs would ask for a deferral of their funding. Okay. They're, that they're makes all it easier there. on us. It's, um, you know, the trustees just want to make sure that there's still that interaction between industry and uh, students. That's the yep. most important part. Um, which, which, um, which brings us to the second part of the brainstorming, which we may as well merge right into, um, which is which is how do we enhance this the, this the partnership? How do we enhance the uh, um, uh, what we're already doing with 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 uh, partner engagement? And um, I know in our region we've we've done a lot of different things. Um, we've been very successful with some of those. Um, and I know with the new program with Kennesaw, um, there's already this discussion going on right now. Um, and but engaging the precasters and, and Carlos mentioned this in in in, in his uh, comments. But in, engaging those the, the precasters very early in the process uh, is important. Um, uh, they're on schedules. They're um, they've got productivity to uh, accomplish, um, and so sometimes they're they're less focused on the on the academic side of things than they are on 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 meeting their own schedules. Um, but if you involve them earlier, I, I know that's a, that's going to be helpful. Um, they're going to be challenged uh, as the economy comes back. Right right now, the architectural billing index is is way off. Um, uh, most of our plants are pretty productive right now, but they're some of the things are going to drain off, and they're going to be putting a lot of their focus on getting things back into the plant. Uh, if I'm correct, there, Tony and and Travis. Um, so working through schedules, working early communication, all of that's going to be important. What's been really successful? What's what maybe do we as industry need to be doing better? I wanted to open that kind of a discussion up. Obviously, our form liner workshops have been very successful. Um, NC State has had a connections workshop as well with JVI. You've got your JVI hat on, Greg. I do. I figured I'd stay on I brand need, today. I need so. the other one. I need the visor with the hair on it. But. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had great luck with the industry partners, and I think that really is a large part of what gets the students excited about this, and it certainly um, it was beneficial uh, for the students to engage across the industry. So uh, I, I know that's expensive in terms of, of time and even dollars. Uh, and I know, Peter, you you and, and our regional folks spend a lot of money um, transporting students to the convention every year, and, and they get a tremendous amount of benefit out of that. Um, but, I, but I also recognize the, the costs and difficulties of doing those kinds of things. So um, 
you know, to the extent those kinds of activities are, are possible, it's it's very beneficial. Um, and um, you know, you've mentioned the workshops, bringing in in JBI and and Ray does the formliner workshop. We engage with the engineering staffs of of Tyndall and Gate and Metromont, our our regional producers, uh, and that practical perspective, uh, even you know, in the design reviews and and in sometimes in a, in a limited way, just a few hours you know, once or twice during the semester in a design review uh, is, a, is a very valuable perspective from um, folks who, who do these kinds of things every day, which um, you know, Dana and I don't, the, the faculty don't. So we, we have some experience, but it's, it's different from the experience someone has who, who lives precast all day, every day. And, and the students, again, they get a lot out of that. So, I'd Carlos, probably like um, to, to make a suggestion, yeah. Peter, and I, I'm probably going to put you in the center of this, but I think it would make sense for us to um, share our, you know, off-campus activities in a calendar. Um, and, and maybe, Peter, you, you might become sort of the center of this uh, as, as you're always gathering um, all activities from all of our um, different programs. Um, so you could probably help us sort of share or coordinate when we do visits or when we do workshops um, to either, number one, uh, perhaps open to, to include any other um, programs in the region and second to sort of be aware of how things are happening and, and communicate from, from our own experiences. It's a good idea. Um, we've been fairly fortunate that these aren't all in the fall, for instance, um, summer, spring, summer, fall. Um, but we're going to, with with four ongoing programs, there will be some conflicts there. Um, I am in the process of updating our website. We do have a website calendar currently, but um, it's a little harder to to use. I'm, I'm on old technology. We're we're trying to um, I'm actually in the process of working on our micro site of the PCI, and there will be a, cal uh, basically it's a Google calendar, uh, actually the PCI one's not a Google calendar, but it's a, there's a calendar on there, and we can certainly list out some of those activities on that calendar mm -hmm. as a central repository for those. It's a good idea. And then certainly also, um, you know, as the term goes on for, for reviews, um, uh, once again, I'm, I'm probably putting a, a, one other thing on your plate that you might not need, but certainly would be helpful as as the center and the person who's always um, on top of what we do in each of our different programs. Um, sort of help us share and help us communicate um, our activities. I think that would be very beneficial. Do you have a recommendation on how to do that? Um, I mean, you, you've you've already you've already initiated a, a share folder, for instance. We, we can do that. Um, I have several share folders on on Dropbox, um, and uh, we we can sh we can certainly share some of those things. Um, yeah, I I think you know perhaps sharing a calendar would be a good start. Um, in which uh, we it, each of, of the programs that has a, an activity that might be worth sharing with anybody else in the region and, and, and the foundation at large, um, we could put it there. And I'll give you an example. You know, when you're coming to do our lectures, um, you know, if you end up doing an online lecture, it probably makes sense to put it out there. Uh, so it's not an exclusive lecture for one of the programs, uh, but to make it accessible to everybody that might want to join in uh, as an option. Um, and likewise with, with workshops with Ray, um, so if he's doing a workshop and it happens to be any kind of learning experience that it's online, uh, we can open it up to all the programs in the region. Um, and if, it, if it's possible for any other programs to also share that, um, it would be easier for us to share with the students and say, hey, uh, this thing is happening at NC State. I, I encourage you to participate or even, you know, make it mandatory to participate in one of these online. So for the online, it would be very beneficial to have them. 
Um, and any experiences that we had on, on any of the visits that we might do to the plan. Um, I think that would be of interest to me personally, only because we do a lot of, of this in the front end and, you know, looking at our calendar, we're probably about less than three months away from, from starting on this. So this would be something of interest for me to, to look at and, and plan ahead. Okay. Well, that's a nice, nice little transition here. Um, July 9th, I think it's July 9th, I am doing an online webinar for, for PCI hosted by the uh, all the PCI chapters, uh, and it's on Precast 101 Plus. Um, it's it's somewhat similar. It's a beefed up version of exactly what I've been doing uh, for for the uh, academic programs. Um, that's probably early for for your programs, but it will be recorded as well. So if we're not able to travel, we'll we'll have that. But we can certainly do something like that uh, for fall semester um, or spring semester. That's, those are good ideas. Um, you all should have had an email today for, for that July 9th. Um, I just put that out and you'll, there'll be another one before then, uh, another uh, promotion of it. But those are all free webinars. And um, once I have a microsite, we will be listing all of the past webinars and recordings of those. So those will all be available as well. PCI West currently has has that uh, has that up on their website, and we will be um, uh, syncing with that. So, Peter, there's a lot of good information out there. Question about ideas for enhanced precast industry engagement. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to all of you and thinking, what are we missing? Uh, so, every you know, the precasters, Gate and Metromont, can primarily cover all aspects of precast, uh, architectural, structural. Is there any value in bringing somebody in like thermal mass to talk about, you know, insulated wall panels and the benefits or is there any benefit talking about, uh, and I know this, a lot of this probably addressed the coursework, but, you know, seismic conditions, uh, I don't know if we have an expert in PCI, but, uh, you know, all these things that, that really bring out the benefits of precast. If I'm, if I'm a, a young architect, I want to learn what the design, not only what the design aspects are, but what are the true benefits of of building of designing with precast? So it seems like we're only doing a couple of things, and that's the formliner workshop, which I'm very grateful of, obviously, for all of you that let us come in there, and, and the precasters, which do a fantastic job uh, with this. But I think there's other elements, and JVI. I didn't mean to leave JVI, but I just feel like there's maybe other elements that are important to kind of bring in the fold here to get that enhanced precast industry engagement. We're certainly sharing in some of these lectures the resiliency and the sustainability aspects and um, seismic. We're show, showing some things, but doing it very briefly. So cer certainly the opportunity for, for some experts coming in. Um, Adele, I don't know if you're listening in. Um, many of yeah. you know Adele El Softy. He's, uh, he is a um, professor down at uh, uh, Florida. Yeah. Uh, correct, correct me, the, the title of Florida Northern University. Um, That's right. And um, oh, is also the chair of the academic council on the on the foundation. So thanks for joining us, Adele. But um, Adele does exactly this in his structural classes that are part of the part of the foundation stu uh, type studios, uh, but brings in a lot of experts to his his classes. You want to share some of that, Adele? Sure, absolutely. And uh, to uh, echo what Ray mentioned about. Uh, the sustainability and uh, uh, energy efficient buildings and stuff. There are some webinars that Marty uh, shared the link with us. I believe it was by Emily Lorenzo that was for energy. Maybe we can embed that. It's a very extensive, nice presentation. It uh, lasted for like almost like 30 minutes or so. So maybe we can benefit from that. It's an in-depth kind of presentation about uh, sustainability about energy efficient buildings and I believe that there is another one about seismic effect on uh, uh, precast elements that was done by a colleague of mine in Nebraska so uh, I believe I have a copy of that so I think we have potential for sharing all this 
kind of resources and uh, webinars. Uh, as, uh, so, uh, Peter, you want me to comment on something in particular? Well, you've brought in you've brought in numerous um, industry folks um, in, into your into your program uh, to That's do lectures. Uh, Yes, absolutely. We used to have uh, like a monthly kind of uh, seminar that we host here at the University of North Florida. So we were able to uh, bring speakers from pretty much several institutions. We got Dr. Sam Riscala from NC State. We got Dr. Mahesh Tadras from Nebraska. We got several others from California. Uh, it was great to have them uh, come here to Jacksonville and make the University of North Florida as a magnet uh, for people to come and listen to them. I remember people came uh, driving from Miami and from Georgia and from Orlando just to attend these seminars. Uh, the Corps of Engineers were attending that and they were amazed they were, that was their first time ever to attend a seminar about pre-stress concrete. We have architecture firm that like uh, McVeigh and Mangum and others, they attended that. So I think we can uh, leverage uh, the expertise that we have. We have wonderful group of faculty, wonderful group of fabricators. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. I'm learning every single time I attend this meeting with you guys. You guys are just <laughs> wonderful. And I'm sure that the architects, the students, the fabricators, the specifiers will learn from us as well. So I'll re-emphasize the point you made there that with these monthly lectures, uh, inviting in a larger audience. You know, so maybe the rest of the campus, maybe maybe some of the design professionals as well um, into some of these. Um, I know we've, we've suggested as part of some of these programs that um, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the architecture programs have, have monthly lectures. Um, outside architects and things, but maybe trying to make sure that we include one that's that's uh, uh, like the morphosis that we had that lecture for uh, on, on the Perot Museum, but having folks like that come in, come in to, to help uh, excite other students uh, and the design professionals uh, about what we're doing, what we're involved in. It's a great idea. Absolutely. From uh, from my producers, Tony, um, Travis, um, I think you're the only ones left on here. Um, what do the academics need to be doing better to uh, in communicating with you as a partner? Um, is it longer, longer, longer um, uh, time announcements of, of plant tours? Uh, Better scheduling with you. What 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 do we need to be doing better? Uh, regarding uh, Gate Oxford, uh, yeah, we get ample time, and uh, uh, I can't think of anything at this juncture to be uh, quite honest. Well, I would say with uh, the new school kicking off at KSU, we probably need to have some time. Uh, in July, a kickoff meeting with uh, Peter and uh, people at KSU and talk about schedules and expectations from uh, each party and see what we can do to uh, uh, set it and move forward in a positive direction to everybody understands and everybody puts the dates on their calendars and don't schedule anything else in, in place and we are all on the same page. So understanding expectations from that perspective. Yeah, and um, this is Liz from Kennesaw. We were um, we were hoping to plan um, in the middle of July um, to have some sort of a kickoff meeting so that since we're involving people from different departments, um, so what we're going to do in the short term in terms of scheduling, like you had just mentioned, and getting it into calendars um, for this fall, but also, you know, maybe the next two years, like what's the strategy um, and to sort of sort of have a, a schedule, like a two-year schedule of, you know, targets and milestones so that there's um, some kind of an awareness of where we're trying to go towards as well. 
So inviting your partners into the into those planning sessions would be would be uh, useful. Yeah, yeah. So for the short term, what do we do for this fall? Um, and then a longer term. So it could be two meetings or it could be one meeting. You know, um, one longer meeting. It just depends on people's time frames and and what works best with with your schedule. I guess with with Metromont and US Formliner. We're willing to accommodate, of course. Okay. Any other suggestions, comments? I think this has been a, a useful sharing process and um, instructive for us. Uh, just the first step in some of this communication. Uh, I'll mention that the uh, we, we want to continue to get students to the PCI convention. Um, I think that's been a, a highlight of some some for, for some of the students. And um, while PCI's activities have been gone virtual, um, probably through the end of the year, um, the convention in New Orleans, which is um, I'm not sure what that date is. It's um, end of February, I think, or early March. I think it's end of February this year. Um, that is on still on schedule. And so depending what, what happens with vaccines and stay in place, dictates, et cetera, um, we in, intend to, to be able to, to go there and to help support students to it. So um, that's something we think about, thinking about in, 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 your, in your schedules. Um, PCI is holding committee days virtually this year. Um, State of Illinois has um, uh, has a ban on, on group gatherings until there's a vaccine or a cure. So through the end of the year, uh, we're not going to Chicago. So they're going to be holding committee meetings prior to the actual uh, date of committee days. And then during the day, during that week of the committee days is scheduled. Uh, in September, I believe it is, um, they will be having council meetings, which is uh, the culmination of each of these commi committee meetings. So those of you that are participating in committees, uh, that's that's what's being planned there. Um, and then they will plan a, a few other uh, activities with that. So um, from a Georgia Carolina's PCI perspective, um, I'm hosting a happy hour uh, Next week, next Thursday, I'd love to invite all of you. It's a virtual happy hour for my board and associate members. Since we're not, since we've postponed our annual meeting in Hilton Head, um, it, next Thursday, the 18th, would have been our opening reception. So at five o'clock, um, next Thursday, five to six, we're hosting a, a virtual happy hour. So if you want to join us on that, I'll send you an invite to that. Um, Ray and um, Tony, perhaps you should have seen that already. Um, Travis, yeah, but they probably don't appreciate drinking on the job. Well, it's five o'clock. <laughs> when are you there till five? Uh, precast plants 24 7. <laughs> five, four, five, five. We, we, we did make it five or five to six so that, um, actually, so that Rob Smith could get home. <laughs> he leaves the plant, you know, 3 30 and he can be home in time. Uh, it works half days in. Yeah. He's not here to rebuttal, so I shouldn't have said that. No, he, he, I know he's there at seven, so. Uh, but we're doing that. We've actually post, postponed, and we're, we're actually trying to hold our annual meeting in Hilton Head um, uh, July 18th now, um, doing some things a little differently. We're, we're running through the same challenges that everybody else is, and uh, we'll see how successful we are with that. But, um, I know that um, from the Georgia Carolinas perspective, um, I know I've, I've been passionate about these education programs. Um, a lot of our board has been. Um, we always have some challenges budget wise, um, and, um, but we've, we do have it in our 2020 budget to continue with all of these programs. Um, we hope in the 2021, we will continue to do that. Um, one of the challenges we have is, is where we get our revenues from. Um, we do get some support from PCI. Now, that is based on sales revenues of our producers. It's a year in arrears, so hopefully into 2021 that's not affected. 
Um, we do get some 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 uh, funding from our uh, uh, cement uh, suppliers. Um, they initially thought that they might be reducing that funding during 2020, but um, we made a case and they are going to continue their funding, so that's not going to be uh, hit us. And so I think I think our 2020 funding is 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 intact. Um, a short version of that so that it shouldn't affect any of any of, of what we're doing with the, with the programs. Um, I'd like to have offline discussions with each of you as to the value of the of the books and things of that nature because I try to order those things in advance um, knowing how many students when we have a hundred students that's a little different um, but I, I did make accessible to all of you a Dropbox with all of these things uh, um, uh, the digital versions of a lot a lot of information for you um, so certainly for those initial courses, um, hopefully that's useful. But when we get to the smaller classes and the studios and things, we, I, I think it's a legacy to have things like the architectural manual or the design handbook um, in hand. So um, we want to make those those accessible. Con, uh, con, continue to do that. So so with that, if there's no more comments, um, I appreciate all of your time. Anybody have any last last comments here? We uh, well, I was I'd like to thank everybody to participate in joining us and taking time for uh, sharing. Um, uh, I know my colleagues and I know each other very well and know our projects very well, but I think it's it was a great opportunity for us to come together um, in light of the uh, now don't like to say cancellation, but I guess postponement of the professor seminar. Uh, I was looking so forward to go and visit that Apple headquarters. <laughs> I don't think we, we were going to get We're going to have to do it at another time. Um, but I, I really appreciate also um, the time that our producers and associate producers took to sit uh, with us and um, listen to us and share um, their views and for their continued support. Um, uh, once again, the folder is there. I think, Dana, you're able to access now. I believe, and um, but let me know anyone if, if you have any trouble. Uh, Peter, I think we should um, upload this uh, PowerPoint that you had as a template as well um, in the presentations, um, the one you were using uh, as a background. Okay. Uh, so it would be very useful. And then we should definitely follow up on, on creating this calendar for starters in terms of activities. But uh, once again, I thank everybody for Thank you all for coming and participating and, and making this thing very successful. Um, Anyone else have any final comments? Um, this is Liz. I just wanted to thank everyone for pulling this together. I um, mean, it was really useful for us starting this. Um, I mean, I realize from what our ambitions are that scheduling is going to be you know, a major factor for us. Um, and so we'll work towards that. But I think also um, just going back to the bring students to the um, to New Orleans for the, the, the uh, convention or conference, um, I would uh, say from our end, um, one of the things to be able to drive students in a larger van of like 15 um, you need to have a special, you know, defensive driving class and such, which I actually have um, and lasts for another four years. So from our end, um, to be able to get students there, we might be able to drive them um, in a, a passenger van. Um, and that might be a way of uh, minimizing some of the travel costs as well, um, depending on what happens with gas right now. Gas is very affordable. But so it, I'm, I'm just thinking when you were going through, hopefully that we could bring students, that that might be a way of doing it as well. Um, because New Orleans, is it's like a six and a half hour drive. It's not so bad. So p part of my planning for that, what, what, I've, what I've typically done, I typically get a hotel block outside of PCI's block. PCI negotiates rates with a, with a hotel. Um, those rates have been recently in the $200 range. Um, I've negotiated closer to government rates with hotels and usually get something close by as, as you've all participated with us. Um, so you've seen that. Um, but knowing how many, because I have to guarantee this, um, so so getting some idea of of how many 
are in your classes, how many you think would travel. All of that helps me early on because um, the earlier I make a, a contract with a hotel, um, the easier and the, and the less expensive that tends to be. Um, we, PCI, we fought for many years uh, about the pricing of, of registration. Um, PCI has been offering th this past year free registration for students and a, and a reduced, greatly reduced registration for, for academic, for the professors. Um, so that's helped greatly, which, which has allowed us to provide some stipends for the travel as well. Um, prior to that, we weren't so much giving the travel cost and having people um, put some of that out of their pocket. But the more we can do for you, the, the easier it is I know on all of you. So uh, we'll work on all of that. We'll communicate those things with you and, and work, work through all that. But, um, I think it's a great experience. I know as a student, um, uh, I, I went to uh, different conferences and, and it was, you know, part of the legacy of, of, the, of the design profession. So um, we can get you there. Um, those students understand our industry better and, and hopefully think about precasting uh, during, during the conceptual. Yeah, you know, Peter, it might be interesting also since Tulane's part of your um one of the people that's at the university is involved in this, if they ended up maybe having a precast lecture as part of their lecture series during that particular time, since the convention happens to be in New Orleans, and then students were able to go up a public lecture, similar to like you did with uh, uh, Xander with, with Morphosis, um, maybe see some of the work that they're doing at Tulane and have some sort of a mixer at Tulane would be kind of an interesting program to maybe add in from an educational point of view. That's a, that's a neat idea. And um, the last the last um, PCI Foundation, we, once a year we do an offsite meeting and we happen to do it at Tulane. So um, so we know some of their folks and um, we, we met with their dean, their chair, et cetera. So, so they were very interested. Um, and there's some neat projects in, in New Orleans that we might be able to do some of this around, including a gate project with the uh, World War II Museum, for instance. Probably walking distance from wherever it will be. So some, some neat ideas there. Great. Well, with that, I know everybody has other things to get on to. Um, I appreciate all of your time. Um, thanks, Tony, Travis, uh, for, for sticking with us. Um, and uh, we'll try to continue some of this more interactive communication as, as we go forward. Thank you. Thanks to everyone as well. And welcome to Kennesaw State. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Looking forward to it. With that, we'll sign off.